Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I'm going to show you in this video how to paint your custodies as shadow keepers. I'm going to show you step by step how to go about painting all the different details of the custode including the armour, cloth and staff. I also want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different stages of highlighting you could do to really make your miniatures stand out. I've already made tutorials showing you how to paint the classic gold armour custodes and solar watch and even have some amazing nuggets of information in them that you could use no matter what scheme you decide to paint your custodes. If you're enjoying my content why not give me a like and let me know in the comments below. It shows YouTube you enjoy my content and it really helps my videos get out to more people and grow the channel and I'll be sure to reply to as many comments as I can. For the purpose of this tutorial I've left some parts separate to make it easier to show you how to paint but if you choose to fully assemble yours it's absolutely fine. Seeing as the Shadow Keeper's armour is black, I recommend using a bad and black spray to undercoat your custodies. This just makes things easier and quicker as the main colour is already painted. You may be tempted to go straight to painting the armour first as it's going to be the main focus of the miniature, but it's always important to think about the order you want to paint things. For our Shadow Keeper, I want us to begin by painting all the gold and silver details first before tackling painting the armour. So let's start by painting all the details we want to be gold first of all using Retributor armour. Take your time doing this and I always recommend thinning your paints with an equal amount of water which is going to help when painting. And although you don't have to worry so much about being neat, it does help as you won't have to do so much cleaning up later and it goes a long way to improving your hand eye coordination. Once you've finished painting the gold, let's give these details a wash using some Reichland Flesh Shade. You want to use enough of the shade to cover these areas comfortably and we're doing this to give the gold definition which is going to help bring out all that decorative detail. Now the shade is dried you can see the details better but the right flesh shade has dulled down the gold and isn't looking as vibrant as we want it to be. So let's use some Retributor armour again but this time to paint the more raised detail making sure not to ruin the definition we've already created helping to bring the vibrance back. Before we move on to highlighting the gold, let's get the silver details painted now. Start by painting any details you want to be silver with some iron hand steel. Then give these areas a wash using Norn Oil. We can now highlight both the silver and gold details together using some Stormhouse Silver. With the gold and silver details done, let's go ahead and work on getting the armour of our Shadow Keeper painted. I really want to go into some detail about highlighting in this part of the tutorial because if you can highlight well then you can paint anything in my opinion. But let's get the armour ready first of all by painting it with a bad and black. This not only cleans up any mistakes from painting the metals but you'll notice the bad and black from the pot is different to the spray undercoat. So also make sure we have a consistent base colour for our armour. Once you're happy with your base colour, let me go through painting multiple stages of highlights. Before you even start, it's worth having a good quality brush which you can get a nice point with. I would even keep a brush separate just for highlighting. You then want to think about the consistency of your paint and how much you have on your brush. It does take time to get used to. I do find I don't thin down my paint as much as I normally would, so we can get a nice strong colour without multiple passes like we would with layering. I also like to remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper from the brush. This helps give me more control and prevents those thick blobby lines when painting. The first highlight that I'm going to show you is a chunky highlight and I'm using Dark Reaper for this. The first highlight wants to be quite a thick line and this is going to help soften and bring out the next highlight we do. It's also going to help with defining the shape of the armour. Go around the armour and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this highlight to get the thickness I'm after. If you make any mistakes, it's not a massive problem, you can just use some abaddon black to neaten up those lines. I'm now going to show you how to do a fine highlight. I'm using Thunderhawk Blue and this highlight is going to bring out all those sharp edges making them easier to see. For a lot of these finer highlights, you can use the edge of your brush and run it along those edges to create the highlights making it a lot easier. For the areas you can't do this, just take your time and paint a thin line along those edges to create the highlight. This is probably the trickiest and most time consuming part of highlighting. 
it just takes some practice and the more you do the better you'll get at it. I'm going to finish off the highlights with a spot highlight and I'm using Femrisian Grey for this. Using the same techniques I've already talked about, pick out some of the more prominent edges and corners of the armour. I like to think about which points on the armour would the light catch making them stand out more. Highlighting is a very prominent and powerful technique when painting miniatures and it does take a lot of time in practice before you get really good at it, but it will never fail to make your miniatures look more amazing and impress everyone who looks at them. Now you're a master highlighter, there's going to be no problem getting everything else painted on Aka Stowed. I now want to show you how to get other details painted like the cloth, gloves and panels on the shoulders. For the cloth, let's start by painting in our base colour using Mephiston Red. And whenever you're painting, it's always a good idea to thin your paints first, and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent any texture whilst the paint is drying. It's also better to paint using multiple thin layers so you don't lose any detail. So make sure your previous layer is fully dry before repeating the process until you have that solid base colour we're after. When you're happy you have a good solid base colour, it's time to shade and highlight the cloth. To shade the cloth, start with painting some corn red into all the folds. You then want to use some Norn Oil in the deeper recesses, but try not to overload your brush with the shade for more control. To get the cloth highlighted, which you should be able to do easily after all the work you did on the armour, start with a chunky highlight using Evelson Scarlet. Then you want to finish the cloth by painting a fine highlight with Troll Slayer Orange. We can now move on to painting the shoulder panels and gloves. For any panels on the shoulders, let's make it nice and simple by painting them with corn red, trying to be as neat as we can around that decorative detail. For the gloves, start with some Mornfang Brown, then shade the gloves using Norn Oil, and once the shade is dried, highlight the gloves with Scrag Brown. With those details all finished, I want to move on to painting the staff and power blade. The Custodes weapon is just as detailed as their armour, so I want to show you how to get it painted including the power blade. And just like the armour, let's clean up any messy areas and get a nice base colour first of all with some Abaddon Black. With that done, let's get it highlighted. Start with a chunky highlight using Eshin Grey. Now do a fine highlight using Dawnstone. For the hand grip ridges, just go straight to highlighting these with Mephiston Red. Using different colours to highlight the different areas of black can really help separate them from each other. For the power blade I want to keep it simple but continue with using highlights to make our custody look amazing. Use some Cantor Blue first of all to paint in some chunky highlights. Now use Temple Guard Blue to pick out all the edges of the blade. And blue Horror can then be used as a fine highlight over the Temple Guard Blue which is going to help create a glow effect. If you want to try something different to how I've painted the power blade in this tutorial then go and check out my other Custodes painting tutorials where I go through a couple of different ways you could paint it. Let's now move on to getting the last few details painted on our Shadow Keeper. There isn't much left to paint on our Custodes so let's get straight into starting with painting the helmet. For the helmet plume let's start with some corn red. Then pick out the details with some Mephiston Red. Finish the plume by highlighting the hairs with Troll Slayer Orange. For the eyes, start by painting a small dot of white scar in the centre of each lens. Then you can use a small amount of contrast athematic blue over these to create a cool glow for the lenses. The last details I want to show you how to paint are going to be all the gems around our custody. Paint all the gems with the bad and black to begin with. Next paint some Cantor Blue in the bottom right of each gem. Now using your highlighting skills once again, paint a thin line around the edge using blue horror. And once you've done that, paint a small dot of white scar in the top left to finish off the gems. Finally, if you want to be fancy, you can use some hard coat on the gems to give them that glassy finish. Our Shadow Keeper Custody is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the knowledge and confidence you need to go away and paint some Shadow Keepers of your own. Remember to go and check out my other Custody painting guides if you need some more inspiration. Thank you for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've got something useful from it. Make sure to give this video a like 
and let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you don't want to miss out on any future content and I'll see you in the next video.